I'd be interested in doing a series where I explore game development scenes around the world. So to start, we'll be going to the country of Palestine, where I've reached out to some local game developers to learn about their scene. My name is Rashid Awaid, I'm from uh, Palestine. I do like, a lot of things in information technology. I work as a software engineer. I do, I do games like in, in my spare time. Mainly I, I do like a full-time software development for, for, for a living. But uh, when I have free time, I work on my own games. I'm currently working in the autonomous vehicle industry. You know, generally when I have a day or two where I can, I try to develop a game. Uh, but much less uh, focused than it was before. I'm Ahmed Nairat. I uh, work as training material creator and interactive material creator and motion graphic artist at the iConnect company. I created like two or three games for myself, like, you know, uh, in my free time. You know how indie developers work. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you create games by yourself in your free time and just uh, post them on the web. What's like... Um the scene like there for game development? I started with my friends, our community of game development here, our local community in Palestine back in 2016, where we started the first event uh, of game development. It was called Game Zanga. This event was the first event that we created as a community here in Palestine. And after that, we kept making these, these kind of events like, you know, Global Game Jam and Game Zanga and some other minor game jams. Every game jam we create in here, I make a game development session, like a bootcamp, three or four hours bootcamp to discuss with people the basics of game development in general, the game design, the game art, programming. And I give like another session about Unity game development engine because, you know, it's very easy uh, in comparison with XNA, for example, or any pro programming language. So yeah, I use Unity and try to encourage people about this. And I try to give samples from simple games that made a great hit in the market so this could encourage them to really join the community and it happened it helped i can count five or six people who really joined our community like three years ago and right now they are making their own games and trying to share them on the google play market like a professional game development there, there wasn't there, there was only one studio i worked with it was back in 2017 but it didn't last long it was a startup called Benchpoint. we did some card games and some a virtual betting games but it didn't uh, last very long so m most of them i like like indie game developers or uh, freelancers that are working for either projects for some local or international organizations they are most like interactive experiences rather than games there are many companies right building games here in palestine but it was not a successful uh, experience there is a lot of limitations here in, in palestine when you, when you think of the basic things, it's limited. You cannot use like a paid account for, on, on Google Play or mm -hmm. in the App Store. You are not allowed to connect to any payment gateway because like many countries that do not recognize Palestine as a country, which is like uh, something sad. What games have you made and stuff? Um, the last game that I did, it was uh, called Leyland The Shadows of War. This game was initiated in 2014 when the war started on Gaza Strike. It was like something that I wanted to make and to share with people all over the world about how Palestinian living and how they are experiencing war and how they are uh, like dealing with the occupation on, on daily basis. It was like a story of a little girl. The game itself has like many true events I tried to highlight. At the end of the game, I shared many of the numbers and statistics about the war, how many people were killed in that war. And uh, but it's not about the number because I don't believe like because there were a huge number of people were dead in that because every one of them is a story and every person, every child is a dream. So this is why I try to highlight a story of one girl and one family. The world reacted to that story in a way that I did not expect. So it was shown all over the world in many events, in many showcases, and won many awards. Here in Palestine, you are not allowed to speak and to talk about your suffering. Uh, this is why uh, Leila was banned, uh, like on, on the App Store, when I released it for the first time. But there were like a huge campaign on, on social media from developers and game websites. After like a few days, they were 
releasing the game on, on the App Store as a game again. This by itself was like a, a shocking experience for me that you, your game is not allowed to, to yeah. be published because it's, it's somehow speak about your situation. This game, I didn't enjoy making it because it's, it was really a hard experience for me. You have to see the events on on daily basis. I, I don't want to do another game about about this. I believe um, that game that I ha- I had to do it as like as a duty because I know like I, I know how to do games. There is no one else could highlight that story as I I do and to share it with everyone. My goals are to create games that can create a better world somehow add a message to a game to make some kind of a change. There's a game that I've been working on, it's called Shelter. It's more about the uh, emotion of the of the person. So someone lives in his uh, house, goes to work, passes through some obstacles that we are surrounded of, like broken streets, uh, garbage on the streets. Some people are arguing or fighting. And whenever you pass through something like this, you get negative energy. If it reaches 100%, you die of negativity. Uh, when you go to work, work uh, charges you negatively by 50%. <laughs> On your way back, pass by a library, for example. When, whenever you enter a library, it, it creates a collectible. For example, a gloves will allow you to clean the garbage off the street. And once you clean the garbage off the street, you gain positive energy. And that's it. I, I try to include some of the... Uh, negative things in our worlds where, uh, you know, military stuff, uh, army yeah. things, uh, shooting. So there are checkpoints throughout the game. If you pass through a checkpoint, you get shot in the head and you get lost. <laughs> so you have to find another route. Yeah, I, I have like two games published now on, uh, in fact, there are three, uh, but one of them is not working anymore, which was the, my, my PhD project. It was called Fahrradwelt in German, but, which means bicycle world in, in English. It was like a series of games where, uh, where, where children ca- can learn the basics of bicycle riding rules in Germany, like traffic, bicycle traffic rules. So the idea was to collect information through telemetry data when, while, the, while the, the players are play, playing the game and then analyze the, these data using uh, expert systems to find out whether they, they have made correct or incorrect decisions. Uh, in addition to that, I have a couple of casual games. I have also some, some tools as well. It's called Unitide, which is a native importer for tiled uh, maps into Unity, which does not require any additional tools. You just drag the map into Unity and it will be automatically imported. I also liked the, the game called Metal Slug. My dream was to do some, something similar. So the, lots of shooting action and very fast-paced uh, games with vehicles and uh, lots of enemies uh, coming uh, from everywhere. Uh, I like it. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to do something similar right now, but with like more uh, advanced uh, graphics. Mostly I do platformers. I like procedural generation as well. So either I do some procedural generation with platformers uh, or I do just games that are super casual, arcadey type stuff. My most well-known game to date was actually called Drink Beer Neglect Family. And it's an arcade one screen uh, platformer where you have to drink beers. The more beers you drink, the higher your score. And with every beer you drink, the level becomes harder to navigate. My most award-winning game, which is just a game that won one award, (laughs) was a a game I did for Ludum Dare, a black and white Metroidvania thing called Avian Days. And that won a local Israeli award. It won like Israeli Game of the Year in the uh, jam game category. Also made the games that touch on the whole uh, refugee situation in Syria and Iraq. The first one was more allegorical. It was about a refugee in space running away from a city. And, uh, you know, people, uh, he was getting foreign help in the sense that the player was eliminating, eliminating obstacles in their way. And in the end, the player would get to a spaceship that's taking him, that's supposed to take him out of that planet. And what happens is that the spaceship says, yeah, we we don't have any place on Earth for you, so you should just stay here. And then I made another one that wasn't allegorical, where you actually just, uh, where you're a lifeboat and you're rescuing drowning refugees. I wanted to donate any money I made with that to uh, charities helping refugees in the Mediterranean, uh, but it didn't have any profits. (laughs) You're involved with the Palestine scene, but you also, you started with Israelis? Uh, basically, I started completely solo, and for most of the time I've been making games, I've been making them solo. 13, 2014, I started looking around, and I found 
a Facebook group with Israeli game developers. Uh, so I joined there and I started getting involved with the scene. At the time, I didn't think there were any Arabs inside Israel that were attending that sort of thing. It felt like I was alone in that in that regard. I attended a game jam, an online game jam that's for the Arab world. That was called Game Zanga. And uh, during that uh, game jam, I placed second out of about 80 or 90 entries. Uh, so Ahmad, he got uh, a message saying from the organizer of the competition saying, well, congratulations to your guy who got second place and stuff like this. And uh, Ahmad contacted me and said, who are you? <laughs> like, why don't we know you? And from there, I started talking with them and I attended a global game jam in Ramallah. Uh, and uh, I attended another event in Ramallah, and you know I've been more in contact with the, with the Palestinian scene. Like I don't consider myself representative of a Palestinian game developer, largely because um, there are several experiences uh, that Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza go through that I haven't really experienced to that extent. So it's a bit uh, presumptuous of me to say that I'm a Palestinian game developer. I take pride that I'm a Palestinian game developer, yeah? But still there's that uh, disconnect there. On the other hand, I can't be looked at as an Israeli game developer uh, because I'm Palestinian, first of all. And second of all, because uh, there are a lot of things that separate me from Israeli game developers as well. So that's why the games I've developed, a lot of my journey in game development was characterized by this feeling of being isolated. It seems like everyone there is focused on mobile games. Is mobile gaming just more popular there than PC gaming? It's more popular, yeah. And you know what? Uh, PC gaming and console AAA games, they need a lot of work to get uh, a great game with great quality. While mobile games can be simple. You can just create a fluffy bird and release it on Steam yeah. or uh, on the uh, PlayStation console. Just a game like fluffy bird. I don't think it makes sense, right? So that's the point. Uh, people here are very simple still. We don't have the skills, we don't have the resources to create uh, hardcore games. So I think it's better to focus on what we can do. What do you think the, the future of the scene is going to be like there? In the past five years, there is an improvement. It's not a big improvement in the industry in here. So I think in the in the upcoming years, if we, if we try to keep the pace as it is or try to even to make it faster, uh, if we try to make more events. Uh, if I can spend some time in making workshops, this may improve a little, but uh, you know, no promises. <laughs> I, like, I like to see it like there is, there is an interest in uh, funding people who are trying to build games or to, to like maybe share more of their experience because I believe that um, there is a lot of hidden stories here in Palestine and we don't have to compete uh, by making like another Call of Duty or another FIFA game or another racing game. I think if we adapt to make small projects that share like a specific experience that not allowed uh, or not shared with everyone yet, and it's specific for, uh, for Palestine and Palestinians, we can make a change and we can make like something different that people all over the world that did not see uh, before. Mm -hmm. I think this is what distinguish small communities, the experience that they have that is not shared with everyone. Uh, we have a good opportunity to share it and to be unique with that. Uh, I think we, we need some help in Palestine in the field of game marketing and monetization. We have very good developers. We have college graduates who are fast learners and self-learners. So it's, it's easy to learn the, all, all the technical stuff of game development uh, in terms of graphic design, 3D animation, uh, even programming. But uh, this was the cause why uh, our studio failed. We failed in game design, how to make the game engaging and uh, interesting for the player to keep playing and how to monetize, how to make money out of game development. Is there anything you want to promote? Any like games or anything? Uh, if, if I want to promote anything or share anything, everything is posted on my website, nerdlab.com. Whatever I create will, is going to be shared there first thing. There's a game that I've been working on. It's called Justice Missiles. It's about uh, rockets falling through the ground. I think I need a couple of weeks to get this in the store. So okay. I can promise it can get, you know, how indie okay. game. Yeah, I would be happy if some of my games uh, promoted. 
I think the most uh, promising thing is uh, right now from uh, what I have already published is the tiled tool, Unitiled, because it has already been used by several developers. Some of them have contacted me asking questions and asking for support. I think I'm glad that uh, there is someone who uses this tool and he, he found it useful. I thought it would be something uh, good to to have it like spread to the world. I think this is uh, something I am... I am very proud of. Just 87.itch.io. <laughs> That's where all my games are at. I also would like to give a shout out to um, Ahmad. He's the one who connected us. Uh, also go check out his games, Ahmad Nairat. Um, and check out any games by Palestinian creators. Uh, there are a lot of creative and talented people that could use the, you know, the exposure and the, just the feedback. Thank you to all the game developers who agreed to be interviewed. You can find links to their websites and games in the description along with the full interviews. I had a great time putting this together. I think it's really interesting and important to learn about game development scenes that aren't North America, Europe, or Japan. There's a whole world of people making games out there and it's kind of a shame that we only think of, you know, a few spots when we think about game development. If you have any suggestions for other scenes I should check out, uh, leave a comment.